Hello, this is a demonstration to show how to use an image button inside of an Android project. So first I'm going to go ahead and create a new Android project. Let's call it image button demo. And I will change the name here to something a little less generic. And we'll just whip through the rest of the uh, template to create a basic Android project. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create an image button on our activity. But to do that, we're going to need some files to work with. So here I've got the actual activity. But first I'm going to want to import some images. I just happen to have a few images here. Uh, .png format, or ping, is a recommended format for the Android. It can also handle bitmap uh, images, or sorry, JPEG images just fine as well. So let me just pick a few of these images here, and I'm going to drag them in. Now where do I want to put them is the question. Well, they're going to go into these resource folders, the drawable folders. And we see here that Android has automatically created four different resource folders for me. These are for different DPI, or dots per inch. We've got the high, low, medium, and extra high dots per inch. Generally, you could, if you wanted to, put an image in each one of these. You can look up the Android documentation online to figure out exactly how many DPI it is. For example, LDPI is about 120, HDPI is about 240. Now, what we're going to want to do, though, is we're just going to import these images straight in. And so we're just going to pick one of them. Um, Android suggests either using the medium or the high. I'm just going to put them into the high partially because it happens to be the first folder on the list, and it tends to work out quite nicely. So I'm just going to drag them in. I'm given the option to copy or link. Link will leave the files where they are, and just tell the development tools on how to access them from the original folder. If you want to actually copy them into your workspace folders, use copy. So now I've got the files here, I've copied them in, and now I can begin using them. So these are all PNG files. If I double click on one, it'll come up in my external editor. So let's go ahead, and what we want to do is we want to put in not just any old button, but we want to put in an image button. So I'll find the uh, images and media, and I've got the image button here. And I'm going to put that on the screen wherever I want it. Let's put it just below here, the below the hello world. Now, Android gives me the option to initially give that button an image. So this will often be the case if you want to have your buttons have images that are not changed by your actual program running. So now I can pick any one of these different icons. Let's go retro and go with the floppy mount. So I'll click OK, and it's now set in there. We've got the floppy mount set up. So I've already got my Android um, emulator running in the background. I'm going to go Control F11 to try and launch it in my activity emulator, uh, saving the modified changes but it comes up and says there's an error. Now, this is actually interesting to try and track down what went wrong. So the first thing you do is you check on the left and you look for icons. So we can see here that there's a little X icon on the project. We can scan down the line and find there's a little X icon here. We're having some problem generating the files. So let's go in and look at the R file. So we can look at this, and here is my generated content. You'll note that I'm in the drawable folder, or the drawable class here, which is coming off of all of these drawable folders, and it's created names for each of my resources. So for example, there's one for three floppy underscore mount, there's one for block device, and so forth. These numbers are automatically assigned by the Android tools. Now what's the problem? Well, this is a Java file, and this is not a valid Java identifier you cannot create a constant named 3-floppy mount. It simply can't start with a number. So we have to get rid of that number. Now, we are not going to modify this file, so we've got to somehow fix this problem. I'll close that. What we need to do is we need to change the name of this. Now before I actually do that, let's have a look at some other ways we could find this error. I brought up here, this will be at the bottom of your screen normally. I hide it just for more screen space. We can look at the log cat, maybe look at the console, or in this case we want to look at the problems. So here it says syntax error on token 3f. Delete this token is what it's suggesting. And it's giving us some sort of hint as to where the problem is. We want to be careful with these names. A few notes on the names. The names should be all lowercase, no spaces, and should not start with a number. You can put a number anywhere else in the file, though. So I'm going to hit F2, which is the same as me right-clicking on this, and then going to rename, which will be somewhere on the list. F2 is much faster. So I'm going to say, just delete that. Now, 
we can see here we've traded one problem for another. So if I were to force a rebuild, which hasn't actually happened yet, I would uh, see that it rebuilds OK, but it's now telling me that I've got an error in the resource file. Well, what's going on here? Let me hide that. We can see that my image is having a problem. Well, why? Well, it was specified to look for something called three floppy mount, which no longer exists. So let's take it one step at a time. I'm going to project, I'm going to clean, and I will clean my image button. So this will force it to clean out all of the generated files, and then it will regenerate them for me because it automatically compiles. So, uh, well, it hasn't actually compiled it here. It's got the problem, so I'm going to go down into here, up to project, and I can say, uh, well, I would normally say build all, but it has already. If you want to force a rebuild, I often go into the Java file. For example, hit a space. Oops, sorry, wrong file. Don't want to edit the generated. Go into the source code for my project, space, save it, and that's often enough to trigger it to rebuild. Now, here it's not maybe going to rebuild until we've solved this problem, so let me go into here and for the source, let's right click on that, it's going to give me a list of ones we can use, and I'm going to take floppy mount. So we've now got uh, the rebuilt image, or it's gone through and figured out what the images are, and I can save that come back up to here. We see that it still doesn't have the R file though. It has not yet built the R file. So let me try that again. Project, clean, and I'm going to clean all projects, including this image button demo. By doing the clean, it has forced it to rethink what's going on, and it has automatically rebuilt my R file. This time without the 3 in front, because I renamed the file. So you can see here it's not necessarily the smoothest process to rename a file when you're depending on it in your code. So let's prove this actually worked. Control F11 is going to force it to uh, execute, and I can have a look at what comes up in the editor. Pardon me, the emulator. So right now it's trying to load the files, it's trying to launch it in here by downloading the images, as well as the, uh, the application uh, to, my appli to the emulator. Great, so now I've got the button, but I don't have anything to do with it yet. Now it is just a standard button, so I can do the usual thing I want to do with buttons, which is set up an on-click listener. So let me put a method here. Let's call it configure image button. And I'll automatically generate that. I did control one, which gets Eclipse to bring up the window. And now I can bring, uh, create this um, method. So under here, I want to get my button. So it's going to be an image button. And let's call it button btn equals, now I'm going to cast to an image button, and I'm going to get it from find view by ID. Now in here, I'm going to specify an R. This happens to be an ID, so I can say R.ID, and I can select it from here. I didn't rename it, I'll have to do that later, but I just wanted to collect that, um, that item. It's not yet going to be able to work with an image button because I haven't imported it, so I can go control one, import image button from the Android widget. And now I can do anything I like with it. So for example, I can say button dot set on click listener to be a new view dot on click listener. Just type on control space. And I can now select it from here. It creates the anonymous object in the anonymous class. And I can put any text I like inside of my on click listener. Have a look at my button tutorial for more information on how to actually configure this. For the moment, we're just going to uh, carry on and set up a toast. So I want to toast, make new toast. I need to give it the context of my application, so main activity of the uh, current activity dot this. Give it some text. You click the button and a duration. So we'll give it a duration of using toast dot gives me the duration of long, and then the last thing I need to do is I need to show it. So dot show, so that creates one using the um, static factory method, and then I call dot show on it to actually display it to the screen. So let's run that. My on create is going to call in my configure image uh, function that I set up here, which is going to set up an on click listener. We close the application and it's now downloading. Now when I click on it, I get a toast pop up. You click the button. 
So that's how we set it up there. Now I want to show one more thing. Let's imagine that we wanted, when we click the button, to change the image on it. So I'm going to copy that piece of code into my on-click listener. I'm going to add a comment here. Change image on button. I've got a few different images I can work with, so let's try that out. So I'll create the find the button, and then on the button I can say set image. I get a number of different ways to set the image. I can set the alpha, which is how transparent it is. I can set a bitmap and so forth. I've already got the images loaded in here. These get compiled up into my R file, and the R file gives it an ID number. So why not just have a function that takes in an ID and just changes the image? Which in fact they do. Set image resource. Now I give it a resource ID, so it's in my R dot. Uh, now I c might usually be no, uh, used to doing the ID here. I want to actually select drawable, because it's in the drawable directories, all of the drawable images, dot, and then it auto-completes, and these are all the different icons, or the different images I've got under drawable. What's going on here is it's finding the values uh, that I'm, or the images I'm working with. In some cases, where there are not images, say, in other subdirectories, it will pick the best one it can find. So here it's just going to be the high uh, DPI one that's going to take. I can pick any one. Let's switch it to the camera. So now when I click the button, not only am I going to see the toast, but the icon on my uh, image button will also switch to showing me the camera. And there we have it, we changed it. Now of course if I click it again, it switches it, well, to the camera icon, and so that's not really helpful. Uh, if we had a more complex application, we'd have more buttons that would change the image uh, to different things. So what have we seen? Well, we saw how to import images. We talked briefly about the different folders and their role in how images are displayed. We added a image button to my layout, and we changed the R, or pardon me, we changed the uh, mainactivity.java to work with that new button. So my image button here, I configure it, and I create an on-click listener to do two different things for me. Thank you for watching. Take care.